I'd like to call this meeting order December 11th, 2018, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Um, I'd like to review and approve the minutes from uh, November 13th, please. So moved. Second. Anybody have questions about the minutes or changes? Good job, Judy. All in favor? Those are excellent minutes. Mark, it's your turn. Oh. All right, thank you. We have in front of you is the expenditure report through the end of November for Frontier. <coughs> you can see through the end of November. We have, with encumbered salaries, we have seven million dollars expended, five point one million encumbered, an available balance of almost two million which is 16% of the available budget. Now, have you made any changes since yesterday on this? I have not. Okay, because there's on the insurance a clause, um, the expenses for insurance and what have you. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we've got it all encumbered. So we had insurance for the health insurance life um, we've expended you got a balance of seven hundred sixty thousand and uh, you had nothing encumbered yep and so i think that's a close to a fatal mistake all right so that two million dollars has been knocked down roughly a million three mm -hmm. and there's some others that i've circled and i believe uh, I wouldn't call it fatal, but I was looking at that and I was noticing that, yeah, we definitely should um, take a look at the uh, expected expenditures through the rest of the year and have health insurance and cover. Yeah. Same thing with utilities. I had also noted that as well. Well, so I'll with the staff. I circled a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. I'm going to do that. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions about the... Uh, Can I check your bills? Excuse me? The total number of warrants and the dollar value? I didn't what? want to count. 23 warrants totaling $2,000,000. Three hundred and eighty-six thousand five hundred and forty-three dollars and ninety-four cents. Thank you, Mark. Did you, did, you oh. did you generate the profit and loss statement for the cafeteria or for the food service? Uh, no, I, right, I'll wait. I did not generate it. It was actually generated by food services. Do you have a copy of it in front of you? I noticed yeah. that folks have. It's part of mine. Oh, yeah, okay. that's part of you. Okay. Do you want to wait on it? Yeah, it's a part of it. It's, it's, uh, it's only a voucher. Okay. Yes, Keith. There was a question last month about clerical salaries on page two. Yes, that's twelve thousand dollars. Let me let me take a look into that. I'll have a look right now as we're talking. See if there are any changes to that, or if it's just a matter of how we encumbered them. I also wanted to just let everyone know that uh, we're planning to have the auditors in next week to go through the FY18 books. So looking forward to that because again, the associate says done the audit for many years, so we're very familiar with the process. So looking forward to meeting with them. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Um, discussion on the Frontier School Capital Plan. Here's one. Subcommittee wants me to take leave? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, we met as a subcommittee, and um, right now we want to postpone the vote on this plan until January, the January 8th meeting. Um, we're going through another round of revisions, um, looking to, uh, I don't know if I should summarize what we're, what we're looking at, but we're looking, at, uh, looking to borrow for the major needs, not for so many of the smaller needs that are under $35,000. There's a lot of needs that are between fifteen dollars and $35,000 that kind of make a long list, and then there's some of these larger needs that are spread out over the 10 years. Um, so we come back around, um, because if we can take out a larger loan, the, the towns can encumber the debt. Um, not encumber the debt, is the word I'm looking for? Exclude the, exclude the debt. Thank you. Um, they don't want to cover the debt. No, uh, they, they want to exclude. They're going to exclude the debt um, so that it it it'd be more palatable um, to their budgets. So by doing that, um, you know, so we're kind of reconfiguring what we're going to take the loan for, all right, and, and have that for you right now. Um, Joe Markarian is 
I have a draft in front of me. I'm working with Bob Lesko right now to make sure that with the moving of things around that we're still getting everything that we need to address in the right order um, because the committee started looking at numbers rather than rather than, we're looking at the projects, but we want the person who put the projects on the paper to look through it now. So um, Joe got me the updated draft yesterday. So I met with Bob today. Um, I have a draft in front of me. Um, but <coughs> then we have another subcommittee meeting on December 27th um, to go through it again and kind of put any other changes on it and then bring it back for the aid. So we thought it was best to make sure it's lined up in, in tight order rather than pushing it forward because we hope to have, done, have it done tonight. Is there, are you still looking at an like overseer or whatever you want to call that position? Yes, that's been, um, so we basically took many of the comments and concerns from the, the, the other evening. Um, part of it is the oversight um, and also putting in some extra money for contingency. Um, those kind of things are being worked in there as well. Um, so that will be part of the that be part of the plan too, and, and that's been added to the, the new project. Some of the questions were about uh, outside grants, CPA, other funding sources. Is that something we try to do up front before or as the process goes along? The as the process goes along, because each one of, unlike a a large building project, this is many small projects. Um, some which would qualify for maybe a green communities grant and you do with lighting. We talk about the lighting in here is, is, um, is on one of those things. Um, we'll be looking for grants to reduce those costs you know, as we go through the plan. So um, that's where Joe was kind of talking about the original presentation when you read through. Some of it is money that's already in the budget. It's trying to give the full scope of money that's being spent on capital expenses. That's, so it's already included in the budget. Some of that could come from E&D. So we're going to kind of have this a comprehensive plan of looking at all the different ways we're going to take care of capital spending, not just through a loan, but also what we can spend down with E&D each year and have a list that we're going to prioritize there. So it's not just, oh, we have E&D this year. What do we want to spend the money on? We have a list of saying, do we have enough and what proportion of E&D do we want to put there versus, you know, we, those are some of the discussion we had um, last week. You know, what part do we put toward town assessments? What part do we put toward um, capital projects? And what part do we keep aside for emergencies and it not also depends on how healthy e and is from year to year so um, and then also looking about you know we're gonna have to start looking at probably increasing the budget line toward maintenance as well and maybe we want to ease that in over a couple of years because it's been at 50,000 for many for many years now we've been overspending that each year so I mean we, we slowly increase that line to match more spending than um, that kind of um, and we're at there so that's kind of where the committee is um, if anybody um, you know, dying to have a peek behind the scenes, and certainly your subcommittee, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to share. Um, I haven't actually sent out the draft yet because I want Joe, um, Bob to go through it, have Joe fix it, and then I'm going to send it out. So, subcommittee, I hope to have his notes to you by the end of the week, if not sooner. Bob was hoping to have it done by tomorrow or Thursday. So, as soon as I have that, Joe will have a quick turnaround with that and push that out. I just want to be uh, say that being on the committee, we really wanted to bring something tonight. And we, we 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 hit it hard that last night, and it, we just we just couldn't come up with an exact census, you know, because we had select board members there. So when the select board members there, they're trying to give us some ideas on their part, and us um, us there on the school committee. So it was a little. I mean, we tried, and we finally said at the end, we're not going to try to present something that's not right, and just take another meeting on the 27th and and do it on that night and then on the 8th present that we still have time for for the budget for the budget next you know in, what, in april it's the town meetings and stuff so so i miss that yeah so the, the one thing that i thought important to let the committee as a whole know was that um the route that to, to the extent that we're incurring debt the the route that we're choosing is going to be a series of one-year notes as opposed to a bond um which the a bond you would the towns would vote on once and the debt would be incurred for the lifetime of the bond um, we're choosing to go one year notes where we'd have to get town permission at town meeting every year um, how, how however um, we don't that way we avoid the bond council fees the bond registration fees etc cetera, etc cetera. so in order to be able to stand up and say this is the absolute best deal that we can get um, and, and 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 the most the most efficient use of, ta uh, uh, of, of taxpayer money that's that's the way to go um, 
but so so that's why I thought that important because there might be this is going to affect all of our attendance at town meeting and what we're all going to have to say. So um, speak now. Right. Right. So that means even though we have something laid out for the next ten years of projects that we think we need to have done, we're going to have to go and get approval every year to get it financed. Point of clarification: the the authorization to borrow is once. Okay. The committee intends to recommend that the notes be issued as the projects are done so that we don't borrow all the money up front. But the authorization is done once, so the town meeting is going to, going to have to act on it once, to my understanding. Okay. That could be correct. That's my understanding as well. But so we'll get that we'll get that ironed out that it's a one vote. Because we want to avoid. We well, don't yeah, want to, we want to avoid times. every yeah, year having to do something that, so, so we'll get yeah, we'll clarity. Better. That we will make better. sure we are crystal clear on that for them. But that was my understanding as well of when you. It just allows you not to. You're not taking a home equity loan, paying on the whole loan to put it in kind of layman's term. That you're not paying on the whole loan. You're going to pay on what you've actually spent from that loan each year, and we're going to spread that out over several years as we get the projects done. But the big thing going forward is. We're not getting any pushback on getting the work done, you know, fixing the building and doing that sort of thing. We're not getting pushback on that. Well, we would be getting pushback if we have to get the financing approved every year. Well, that could very well yeah. be, but we're not getting their biggest. The so finance committee, the way I understand it, their biggest thing is the town, in particular Deerfield, only has so much new revenue each year. Okay. So they want to be able to make sure that they uh, don't tie themselves up in uh, the, the projects taking all the new revenue. That's why they want the to be able to vote a debt exclusion uh, so that they can raise the money. When this, uh, when the major renovations were done here in the 90s, it was a lot of money, but there was a debt exclusion, and we just paid those bonds off a couple of years ago, maybe three, and. We actually played them off early because of the interest rate changes. Uh, Don Scott was able to get us uh, to refinance the notes and what have you uh, 10 years ago or 11, and it saved us a lot of money. Okay, so we paid it off early. <coughs> but I think by next uh, the next meeting in January, we should have it pretty well ironed out what we think is the best way to go forward. Okay, And, and there's no perfect answer. And what I will try to do is, um, not try to do, what I will do, as soon as the um, documents are looked at by the subcommittee on the 27th, I'll get it out to the full committee so you have a chance to look at it in advance. Um, if you have any questions and that kind of stuff to be able to go through. And it will do a cover sheet of what the major changes are in it. So, because I know when you get when you get something that looks like this, it kind of gets blurry if, if you don't know where to go within the, in where the changes are. So, um, not all of you. Some of you, it's not blurry at all. Some, but, that's why so I got these now. Yeah. It's not blurry. <laughs> All right. it, it is the hardest working committee in show. Good luck at that. Anybody else have anything? <coughs> uh, any public comment tonight? Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to <coughs> note that the uh, former superintendent, Alfred J. Lottie, uh, passed away a week or so ago. And he was the superintendent and principal here for a number of years. Uh, I enjoyed a healthy debate with him many times. Okay, and uh, he was very instrumental in this library being built because prior, prior what existed there was nothing on this this level. Okay, and the roof on the cafeteria was concaved and leaking and pretty much unsafe. And he applied for the monies. And Billy was instrumental, also because he was on the yeah, building committee, here. and he was secretary of the committee. I read his name on the plaque tonight. That was 1981. I think Mr. Lottie left maybe about 1984. So he's had a successful retirement. He passed away in '89. We have a copy of it in his obit, so Judy can put it in the record. And I'd like to ask the chairman to send a nice letter to his family, thanking him for service. Okay. Well, uh, student advisory. We have somebody tonight. This is Sophia Rossi. She's going to be presenting. <coughs> um, the student council is currently organizing a toy and pet supply 
Pet Supply Drive, which ends on December 15th. Uh, it partners grades 10 and 12 and 9 and 11 against each other, kind of as motivation for people to bring things in. And all toy donations are going to Shriners Hospital, and the um, pet supply donations are going to Heroes, Horses, and Hounds, which was orchestrated by a student in my grade who works close with the, closely with the organization. And then the student council is also going to be selling candy grams, and the profit of those is to bring the student council to, a, uh, hopefully, to bring the student council to a meeting with Greenfield, which has a very engaged student council. Thank you. Wow. Nice job. Thank you. Any questions? Last name. Sophia. Okay. Uh, Frontier Regional Building Renovation Subcommittee. That's that was what we moved that's across. That's what we did. Okay. Uh, update on the sale of 219. Um, so um, it's not done yet. <laughs> not done yet. We're a lot closer though. So um, we are moving the files out on the 19th and bringing them over to Frontier. In so which case, we pretty much will have some odds and ends to get out of the building. But we will should be out of the building by the end of the month. I've contacted the buyer and let him know that. Um, and so he's going to um, he's working with the town now because he's trying to close both pieces of properties at the same time to set up a date to to finally close that out. So um, I do have to say he's been. Uh, very easy to work with in the sense of the timelines and you know we're in there probably a month longer than we than we should have been and even when i was working with him projecting out if this i couldn't get it done by the end of the month he was even talking about allowing us to go through the end of um, january so it was um so we're in a good spot so hopefully we'll have all those records brought over here and go through them organize them and stash them the warrants you signed tonight paid for another fifteen hundred dollars worth of oil for that okay right. so yeah, we had to put oil in, so we're gonna have to work out as Bob uh, brought to my attention um, on the sale. Let's see what we're gonna do with that oil. Bob, yep. um, just to back up, is more of a point of order. Do we have to vote to postpone the vote to next month? No, you can table it. Anybody have any other questions about famous 219? <coughs> okay. We're go right into new business. Lots of trips. <laughs> Lots of trips. Okay. Um, you're first. What? Yeah. All right. I've been trying to get on this since October. So. You can stand wherever you want, wherever I guess. Wherever I can. Okay. Wherever right. the camera can get you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Sit next to me is the camera. <laughs> I'm Madame Yell, and I've been at Frontier since 1992, believe it or not. And I do trips every five years as it so happens so my last one was in 2015 and 2020 is around the corner so i'm already planning a trip to france in 2020 and uh with the explorer car i've already got it organized and a good price for all so now i just need your permission to proceed any questions how much does it cost approximately well i deal i'm a wheeler dealer so I'm keeping under 3000 That's my goal. So, yep. Because I know trip prices go up and up and up, and as a parent, I know it's hard to <coughs> afford all that. So it's under 3000 and the sooner I get my parents on board, they can get on a payment plan, which is about, right now, the cost of my car payment, like $184 a month. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah. But I need to get the trip going so they have more as many months as they can to, to raise money raise money yes so does everybody have any questions Keith? how many kids are you looking to bring well uh per six kids i have a chaperone so uh, as as long as i have chaperones i can bring as many as many as want to go i've had trips of 35 and i've had trips of 20 25 sky's the limit and parents are welcome to go too so sure, that's exactly what our kids want. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. That. <laughs> but I do have a lot of parents that want to go, and it's great because they pay to go, and it's one less person for me to chaperone. Unless they want to be chaperoned, then I can. Chaperoning the parents? Yes. Yeah, I can do that. But, so. Yeah, can you go? Can we have just... to bring the kids? <laughs> no, we exactly. can do a summer trip. Forget the kids. We'll do it in the summertime. You don't have to be back. <laughs> I know. She's just planning a trip. <laughs> yeah. So I already have some very excited kids. 
already. But this is basically the kids that are studying French? Or yeah, well, uh, they have to be members of the French club. Okay. Okay. And I have a very hard, hard uh, requirement. To be a member of the French club, you have to take French. That's about it. Yeah. And then if you want to go on the, fr the French trip and you're not in uh, taking a French class, then you have to join the French club. So it's kind of anybody who loves languages. I even take Latin kids because after all, Latin is the romance, the root of the romance languages. So I figure they can go to. But they can join uh, the French the club, French club without uh, taking French? Yeah. Oh. Yes, because, yes. French is... Oui, c'est yeah, no, anyone can be a member of the French club. I never did very well in French, so I can't. So you're not going on the trip? <laughs> you're not going to you're on the club. <laughs> but I'll tell you, if you ever dealt with Catherine Peterson, you knew what it was to go to her French class. Aha, uh -huh, I've heard of her. Yeah, Billy Smith right. probably had her too. We're going to get counseling. Let's move. <laughs> right. So make a motion to accept <laughs> France. Second that. So moved. Second. I think there was already a second. Oh, all right. All in favor? Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Have fun. Thank you. All righty. Well, bon voyage. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, you're up next with a couple. Why don't the other two go first? Okay. I'm staying here anyway, so. Okay. You mean they don't want to stay? <laughs> Zoe? Why? Yes. Uh, my name is Zoe Keenan. I'm the new um, coordinator for the Dutch Exchange Program. Um, I'm asking permissions for us to go this year. It's going to be um, me and Bob Smith are taking 16 kids, and we're going to the same school um, in the Netherlands, visit the same families that came over in October. Um, so it's just our trip to go, and we have the, we're going to leave April 3rd, and we're going to get back April 13th. How much? So as of right now, um, the trip will cost um, 1500 for every student. Well, it's because they stay with the families over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Move to approve, Mr. King. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. See, Allison, you couldn't get out of the deck. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're next. I'm sorry. One more. One more. Sorry. Hi, I'm Melissa Strauchy. Um, I've taught here for the past five years, and I have the privilege of being the eighth grade Washington, D.C. coordinator this year. So I'm bringing to the table the eighth grade uh, DC trip. I think this is the 28th or 29th year. Um, we have about 102 students on board, three buses, dozen chaperones. Um, we're planning on taking all the kiddos to uh, Philly and Washington DC the last week of February into March. Um, some of the highlights are gonna be the new American Revolution Museum in Philadelphia. Um, they're gonna be meeting and talking with a Holocaust survivor. Um, and Mount Vernon, kind of the, the, a lot of the same sites that the, have been on the trip for the past 28 years. Wow. Yeah. And this is this, how many times have you been? Um, this will be my Probably, I think my fourth or no, yeah, my fourth time. Yeah, so you know, fourth. you know all the right moves to go down there and to the right spots. And yeah, yeah, and we we got a great crew of drivers too. How much? Um, this year it's seven twenty, and um, we've done a lot of fundraising so that we have scholarships for students that need it. Um, in addition to just fundraising off of your own trip, we had this one student fundraise three hundred and sixty dollars. Off their trip. Wow. Yeah. Motion to approve the Washington D.C. trip. Second. And Philadelphia. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. We'll put out that you're not staying. But okay. <laughs> okay, Allison. <laughs> Do the. I'm not going to say we left the best for last, but. You know. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> this is the itinerary for the Washington DC trip in March for the AP European history and the AP government kids. The first trip though is um, the Model UN Club does uh, the Boston University Conference 
in February, and it's we leave on Friday, February the 8th after school, and we're there the 9th and come back on the 10th. And it's a competitive conference where this, the kids all have um, UN representative committees assigned to them, and they know ahead of time who they're going to be and what they're going to do, and they do research, and it's actually a lot of fun. And it's at the Marriott Copley Place Hotel this time, and then we have a, one of the small buses, like the, um, oh, is it Knights Limousine? One of the little 26, oh, yeah. there are 14 kids that are going this year. Wow. So, and that's totally extracurricular, it's not um, academic stuff for school during the day. So that's the Molly UN Club. No. Any questions about that one? We just voted on a trip that's not on the agenda. Can we vote on something that's not on the agenda? We voted on the Washington, D.C. She's Washington. doing the Washington trip right now. No, this is no. No, 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 no. no. This is the, not, there is, there's only She's one She's doing on the model you and the second one down. There's only one Washington trip on here. That is correct. And we just that voted on correct. it. That is correct. No, the Washington one that we just voted on is the eighth grade trip. Where is that's it? not on here. The second item down, B. Model UN trip to That's Washington. hers. That's, that's, that's my first true. one. Oh, he's going back one. And then you're doing DC have, for AP right. government, right? Yeah. So that is you. You're right. It wasn't on here. I, I, I don't care. I just don't want <laughs> us to get in trouble. Because we, we voted on something that's not on the agenda. Month. Oh, very It's not on the agenda. It has well, who made agenda. the motion on that? I did. I saw him watching. Might have been me. <laughs> he was. No. I, I kept reading this thing and I thought, well, maybe she's sure doing it for you. And then I'm going, she said end of February. And I said, this is mine. Sure it's, so. it's a paper thing. Well, we used to have a thing. With, so, we with the committee's permission, I'm not going to have yeah. Melissa come back. We'll just re vote it as a formality stayed. next month. Okay? <laughs> well, we could actually vote it tonight if there was, if there was unanimous consent. It wasn't, it wasn't something that was anticipated. We were certainly within our rights to do it. Right. Unless somebody wants to object and bring it back in January. I'm not trying to cause trouble. I'm just so, trying to make it done the right way. So, we so don't have to bring them back in No, no, but it's cleaner to do it. We can do it. Yeah. Sorry, Allison. No, no, no Allison's, Allison's fine. fine. Allison's I'm fine. fine. I'm on the agenda. She's fine. So we, 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 we halted <laughs> you. We, we disrupted your presentation. You're about to get passionate. <laughs> Can I go ahead now? You may. I'm getting a little punchy right now. All right. So this agenda that you have is the draft proposal we're still working on. Laura Moore still is in contact with members of Congress to see when they can fit us in. But tentatively, we've pretty much been able to stick to the same plan. We leave on Saturday morning, the 23rd. This is juniors and seniors that are in AP European history and AP government. Um, we go down on Saturday. We Sunday is Arlington National Cemetery in the morning. We do museums for the afternoon. I take my juniors to the Holocaust <coughs> Museum. We're right in the middle of studying World War II at the time. And Laura is taking them to the National Archives. And then we're meeting up. We're going to try and get tickets. It's on a rotating, they release a few tickets at a time for the, the American, African American History Museum, which is very difficult to get into. Um, same with the Holocaust Museum, because you know you have to book tickets, and so you have to do it June, uh, November 30th. They open the tickets up, and they go like that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then on Monday, we go to the museum. The First Amendment, I think, is one of the most important amendments that students know about right now and the freedom of the press, so they really enjoy that museum. That's the only one we have to really pay for, um, but it's within the price uh, that they pay. Uh, we will get a tour of Congress. Last year we had McGovern take us around on his own. We got to go through all the secret back doors and go into the chamber before they were even coming in and he talked to us. Um, then. We hope to have a meet and greet with Senator Warren. Um, Senator Markey never seems to be available, um, but Jim McGovern always is able to talk to the kids, and we're going to try and see um, John Lewis again as well. Um, depending on the number that they'll allow in, they've allowed 30 of us in his office before, um, so hopefully that will work out. And. What are we doing? Oh, Laura does the Supreme Court at 5 to 6 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. The AP European history kids get to sleep in because the <laughs> National Gallery doesn't open until 10. 
and I take them to the National Gallery, and then we meet up and usually go back to meet with somebody and then hit museums on the way back to the hotel. And we stay in George, uh, George Washington University area. The kids get a taste of not being herded around with free time. We travel by subway all the time. We're going around, and, and one night I usually take them for a night walk through the monuments. I'll let up. So moved. Great trip. Yeah. Second? Second. All in favor? For both trips. Both trips. Both trips. Sure. So now we're still one ahead, which is good. Yes. Thank you. So you want, you want to go back and re-go that other that other thing or just well Sherry has a it's a written down that we went back and took it on that. We did what? It's written that I wrote it so that it looks like we went back and addressed new business from the How do you want to do it, Bob? Just tell me. Well, the easiest thing is to just to move, uh, to, to cor correct the omission that acknowledged the fact that the board voted unanimously for it. It wasn't anticipated. That's why it wasn't on the agenda. And, uh, none, none of which is true, well, of course. And add something to the agenda after we've already acted on it. it seems like kind of a okay. You really want thing to do. Except so why don't we just you can do it add right? things to the agenda as long as they wouldn't make. Yeah, but not after they happen. Not. This has already happened. Oh, we got to add this now. Oh, you had it before. Only if we knew she was, was here. You. So do you want to discuss it again? <laughs> <laughs> just trying just to not make this I know. not look too much like Washington D.C. <laughs> 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 don't go there. Like um, just vote it again next month. I'd be perfectly happy to do it next month. We can vote it again next month, and then, but I will tell Ms. Strokey she yeah. does not need to come back. She right. got the information we needed. But as of vote. right now, she does not have permission. And you can include as of right now, if you change your mind, let you me know, want. and I will let her know. <laughs> okay. That's good. I already hate my kid to go. The profit loss <laughs> statement for the mushroom <laughs> sir. Um, so if you don't want to stay, you don't have to stay, all right? You're certainly welcome to, but as you can see, there's other things to do. You can watch it on Tell us about the food, though. You could. It's on the agenda. Um, all right, you should have a profit loss. I'm trying to find mine. Um, here, in front of you. Gave it to us, Iris. Here we go. As you can see, we are in pretty good shape going into no, um, for the end of November, um, with net profit about six six thousand two hundred. Um, sales are up. Sales are also up in um, considerably up in October for breakfast. Dipped a little bit in November, but November we had a lot of between snow days, holidays, and there's just less service days. So when you look at you have to look at when it's done by month. It's kind of a you really should look at number of days because the days change from month to month so that sometimes is your is your difference there um, uh, but overall as you can see um, the program is running in the black and is running well so uh, Mary's doing a wonderful job I, she's fantastic she's very responsive um, and uh, that's kind of where we're at so um, this is also with a large number of substitutes in the kitchen we've had three up to three people out of the five-person staff um, in the month of November, due to various reasons, um, and so um, she was she was very concerned that we were going to be in the positive for the month of November. Um, but you know, with the amount of uh, amount of service days versus the amount of days off because of holidays and six snow days and um, professional development days and that kind of stuff um, that came in November, um, I think we got kind of lucky with that with the substitutes that were needed. Um, any questions on that? Can you speak to what student refunds are? I notice in um, it's at the bottom, more towards the bottom. Um, in for months it's zero, and then it's in November it's ninety seventy five. I'm going to guess, and Mark can maybe chime in if I guess incorrectly, but I'm going to guess if a student makes a payment into the program and then withdraws the money, that we would be refunding the money. That sound about right? That would so. occur if you were you put a hundred dollars in for this month and then. You bought. You brought a bunch of time, and you decide to move next month. You're like, "How much money do I have in my account?" And we write a check out. 
Okay, so the zeros just mean that nobody nobody took else out was what refunded money in. at the time. Okay, thank you. And I don't want to go into George's report, but we also have gone into online. You want to talk about that? They take away no, any year I, thunder? What's that? No, that's you can talk about that. All right, <laughs> excellent. That on our report. So now we've also gone to an online system um, where parents can pay online, um, and it's taken off from what I understand. And yeah. We're also getting it slowly implementing it also in the elementary school. There is a convenience fee for the service, the vendor that does the thing, um, that does the processing of the credit card online, so you can pay up to so much money and that kind of thing. I think I forget it's a buck ninety or something it's, like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like a dollar fifty or two dollars. You can still do it the old-fashioned way and bring yeah. in a check if you don't yeah. want to pay the convenience fee. But I think many parents will find it a convenience. I know I work at do it my my students my kids district um, as well as just you. You forget to do it, you put it on the account and. It's just one of those things you can worry about lunch money once every couple months at night in front of your computer. So, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. We we'll get the feedback from parents eventually how that goes. I registered my kids, and I registered them, but then they couldn't be validated. So I don't know. I called Mary. Mary said there's a glitch in the system that's supposed to be fixed, but it hasn't been fixed yet. So that's in the elementary school. We did this. Week. Last week, I'll check it with Mary. See where we're at. Now. So um, they released it at Deerfield first. Um, I think it was at Deerfield. It was a here at Deerfield first. George, you remember where they released it first? They released it here first, um, and then we're going to Deerfield, trying to get the glitches out there. We also had another glitch in the very beginning. Was it here we had a glitch as well? I'm not sure about where the first glitch was. But there was some glitches getting into it, doing that. Um, you also understand that the treasurers for each of the elementary schools have. The accounts have to go to the treasurers of each of the towns. So there's multiple layers of people <coughs> multiple hands. people yeah. with their hands on it. So there were, we expected no, glitches. Of, right. Right. <laughs> or maybe it's just your kids, Damien. I met them. And, and that could, right. We're really, all all we're really not going to school here. That's right. They haven't been validated. All the costs that are on here were reflected in the warrants we signed. We approved tonight. Right? Because there was an awful lot. There was a bunch of food invoices. Yeah. Yes, they should. Yeah. Yes, if the warrants for well, food costs for the month is sixty-eight hundred dollars. So oh, I just want to make sure it's all in there. That's a question for Mark. I don't know what if, if those weren't she. Those are for that month, and so sometimes food deliveries will come this month, and we don't get the bill to the following month. That's why I'm asking. You know, so there are some deliveries that may. So this is not. Yeah, this is not a. This is a, a rolling tally of where we're at. And it's, you know, I mean, there, there's stuff. Well, we could be a month behind by the time we get to July, right? That's a good question. I can find out. And so yeah, when we get this, if they can turn all the invoices posted through such and such and warrants, okay. you know, so that we get an idea we can follow. It. So yeah, and I also, it's all in and I also, um, I guess the question of the school committee is how often do you want um, profit loss statements from the Food service. I, I don't know what it was in the past. It, was we didn't get ever. it was. It was never. It was. It was usually came at the end of the year as a loss, and this was. You know, we wanted the um, accountability to what was. You know, obviously what happened last year in a new system and that kind of thing being brought in. Um, so I, I think every couple months I'll bring it until things are running kind of smooth, and then we'll do a quarterly or something like that. Unless so, you want it, well, something outside of that. I, I, I think this is great the way that this information is organized. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what we've been asking for for yeah. a long time. Um, so thank you. Sure. Uh, that, but uh, when I'm looking at it, it just would appear to me that we're still not accurately reflecting our real world costs. We're not putting in employee benefits. We're not putting in things like that. So that um, I don't know. It, it, you caught that, and Bob didn't. No, Bob already talked about it last uh, last year. It cost us eighty five hundred dollars or something like that for. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, you got the two of you working together? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! All right. If the purpose is to be to, to show the real world numbers, then I would say I asked the question last year. It took a long time to get the answer from Pat. Yeah. But I think it was eighty-five hundred. I could be wrong. So, explain to me what you want. You I want to know the indirect benefits that you, you want the, the direct and the indirect. Because this food service person puts this list together doesn't do that, so I have to have them work with. Um, and it's, it isn't budgeted separately Business. for the, for the uh, cafeteria. It's, it all comes out of that great big account that you have with all the teachers. So you want all benefits and everything to be underneath salary and wages? Yeah. Okay. 
what we talked about last year. Over and over. <laughs> <laughs> you did. And here we are again. I think it's a great idea. They will know if it's really self supporting. It isn't. I don't know if we really want to see it. I said the wrong word. Hey, when we're, in a, hey, we're on the right track. We are doing yeah. great. Yeah. This is definitely on the right track. It seems like we got the right person. Oh, there's other there. places, other school systems around that haven't had very good luck with the craft areas running substantial deficits. Has anybody ever checked the throw out? Like the, the waste? You know, we're serving this food. Are mm -hmm. we cutting down on things that people throw out? Consumption just versus look in the bucket and waste. Say, you know, looks like people are throwing a lot of food out, or it looks like people are eating their food. Can we put a security it, camera? It's a, on it's a loaded. That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, it's a loaded question, especially in the high school where you're required to take the exactly. portions set by the government. Whether or not you want the scoop of carrots, you will get the scoop of carrots, and we can't sell you a lunch. So, at the end, there's a big pile of carrots. <laughs> it's not because they chose. They didn't choose to eat the carrots. They didn't want the carrots to begin with. Okay. I think I remember, remember a couple years ago, I was telling you when the first things were kind of rolled out, it was the, the senior who didn't want the apple on the tray. And I'm 18 years old, and can't I buy my own, can I buy a tray without an apple? And the woman's like, I'm sorry, but I can't serve it to you without the apple on the tray. So we have a take it or leave it apple table now. But that is going to be changing. I, I did just see a report, yeah. like, and, and you said that the federal regulations are going to be actually they're going to be changing now. So we don't and, have to take and, and the that, that. So I'm not sure when that's well, going to happen. But they said that that was well, going to happen. <laughs> but Cindy, yeah. they can put one of those uh, security they're cameras they're behind on that area to see what's school. thrown out. No, I know. I know. But well, every school has that problem. But it's interesting to see if it's fine if we're selling it to them. But February, I'll try to Are we throwing a lot of it out? February, June. I think it's a good question. Because then we have something to bring to the state like, here's your carrots. Keep them. Moving on. Well, we can bring it to the you can bring it to the homeless shelter every day. Don't be fresh. All right. Whew, this group is getting tough. Tell them here. Here's your kids. There are certain farmers that are probably will you done so, so I, as was just whispered to me, I will try to get a. Re, I'm not going to have a report for you by the eighth. Okay. So um, I'll try to get a report for you for February with these the real costs of the entire. As I just kind of. Mark and I just kind of looked at each other, nod in February, seems like a realistic date to get that, so so that we can take continue to examine our our food. And hopefully, with that, it's still in a better place than it was. Should be. We'd like to go over the uh, budget calendar now. Oh, exciting stuff, yeah. Um, so, um, we're starting budget season. I know you're all excited about it. We are too. Um, TMS and I are meeting with the principals on Thursday to go through and start to um, spell out with, like what we want to see in building the budgets. And then, um, if you can kind of look forward, then we create a subcommittee here. Is the subcommittee already? We've already that had that. Already that was voted down yeah. earlier. So we need to make a subcommittee meeting prior to the eighth. And I would almost recommend that we just meet prior to the meeting on the 8th to kind of, the first, as we know, the first kind of shot on things is looking at, Bill, you've kind of, it seems you've, sense. you've been through this, you've kind yep. of been taking the lead on those, and Mary, are you on the subcommittee this year? Prior to the, yeah, prior to the 8th? No, they want to meet on the 8th. On the 8th. On the 8th okay. I want to meet prior, I'm, I'm recommending we have a school committee meeting on the 8th, that we meet prior to the meeting on the 8th because do you have another committee well, meeting? What did we just do at Deerfield? Are we meeting on the 8th? You're very quiet. i got to bring that up. I'm yeah, you are. You are good. You are good. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's not going to work. It's <laughs> not going to work. Okay. No. So what Mary's bringing up. <laughs> what Mary's bringing up is another good. I'll bring it up since we're, it's already on the table. Is that I just left the Deerfield meeting. Um, and as you. Um, may remember that starting in January we went to independent night meetings in um, each with their own night for each school. Waitley this morning said they'd, rather, they'd like to keep the same morning meeting and so they moved their meeting from Monday the 7th to Tuesday the 8th to follow the same kind of format as now. I just met, left the meeting with Deerfield and um, 
asked what they wanted to do because their meeting is right when we come back from break, the second. It was bad planning on my part. I'll be the first to didn't see that. I was excited about the meetings being combined together. But we really need more time from the business office coming back from break to get kind of things lined up. So they are offering to move to the 8th at 530 and then asking if the Frontier Committee will move to 7 so keeping the same kind of system we are in today. Um, if Frontier doesn't want to do that, we're not forcing you to do that, we have an alternate date if, if, if that doesn't work out, moving at that hour forward. But then it comes down to the next question, what are we going to do with the subcommittee? Well, so if, is that anticipated to be a long meeting? The, the subcommittee meeting. So if we move our meeting up to 7.30 and you meet with the subcommittee at 7, 7.30, is that enough time for that one time deal? Depends on what's the agenda that night. If we're going to start at 7.30 and we got to... Yeah, we have the, we have the, we have the, the, the capital plan. Yeah, the that capital might be a long night. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to start. Should we just? We shouldn't. We shouldn't start too late. I mean, if anything, let Deerfield just pick a different day. We could do that. I mean, no, we have so a day. We have a day. No, we, 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 we did a backup. We did a backup all today in case it didn't so work out. We're the only ones that can change anything, or you have your subcommittee meeting on the seventh, sixth. I don't. I don't think. As, as can you the, meet as a subcommittee on the same? Why don't you have the subcommittee meet at six that night? You can't. And the board at seven. Oh. Well, well that's a, no. We can move it to the tenth. No, we'll move the Deerfield meeting. The Deerfield meeting will be moved to the tenth. Why don't we just Why don't we just keep our meeting for, so for the eighth at six o'clock? It's and they can meet at five thirty. Did you Are say we still meeting at six o'clock? That's where we're doing. Okay. So they're moving there, so we're going back to six. You're going back to six, and I'm suggesting that we do a budget subcommittee at five thirty. Is everybody following what happened just there? Okay. Yes. Can you just have a meeting in the very large font? What's that? Six. six. Our you meeting know? will be on the 8th at 6. Six. In budget large subcommittee font. will be at 5.30. Yes. And Deerfield's got, Deerfield Elementary we'll has their the own tent. date. Whatever the date whatever is. Whatever they want. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Work it out. <laughs> I, think probably, I think that's probably best anyways, given the, the agenda for the 8th. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, heavy. It's to, long. It's a long Could day. be. Could be not. We think of it as long. Well, it's still, yeah. I mean, the subcommittee, I'm talking about mine. Okay. My stand on there, Bob. Hey, I got to start off at that first thing that morning with you. Yeah, but you're going to be retired yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, you know, that's you true. I'll be retired by then. You're right. It should all balance out. So, gee, okay. All right. So, anything else on the budget? Everybody know who, who you are, right? I struggle with that sometimes. Okay. <laughs> we'll, meet, is it, we'll meet here. We'll meet here. We'll just meet over on that side prior to the meeting. We'll, I'll get make sure it gets posted and such. And then, um, as, as we usually, one is knows that through the process, the first budget is so so drafty in the sense of the wind's just blowing right through because um, the governor's budget may or may not be out at that point, um, and we won't have a good idea of the real numbers of how we adjust things until that gets released. But we'll have an idea of what the needs are at that point and some of the expectations or hopes at that point. Whew. Okay, report time. No, I don't no, have no, any. No, 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 by law are allowed to find a single posting place for their meetings. Right now, when we go to post a meeting, everybody kind of knows that nightmare, I don't need to kind of review, but because certain town offices are closed on certain days, in order to have a 48 hour notice, we have to, we have to kind of back everything up. Um, or um, we can't have, you know, we really got to plan you know, more than a week ahead. Regional school committees are allowed to post their meetings online on their website as long as they go through the um, through the process of one you vote to do that and then we also notify all the towns that moving forward our website will be the official posting place and of course we'll continue to email all the towns so they can put it on their websites as well but the official website of ours um, 
Frontier website will be where, in central office, they're interlinked, um, will be where the postings will be. This will allow us, <coughs> it'll save Donna a lot of headache and will also allow us to, if you guys want to have a meeting on you know, Thursday this week, we can have, well not Thursday, Friday this week, starting today, we could post that tomorrow morning and have it done in time. You know immediately so it allows it it's just efficiency so it's something that probably should have been done years ago mm -hmm. i don't know what the holdup was so um, moved second to keep part is continuing to email the town separately as well yeah so <coughs> all in favor yeah i'm sorry that yeah, what, what phil just said <coughs> yep. I added what Phil said in case anybody's concerned, in case any of the towns are concerned about that, the vote is with the understanding that we will continue to email the town select um, town administrators at the postings. Now it's report time. Thank you. I don't have anything collaborative, Robert. Uh, we haven't met, I don't think, since the last time. Uh, okay. They closed the year out with a uh, deficit, I think, memory serves you right roughly 25,000, much less than the prior year, but still, uh, you know, bears, bears to be monitored closely so that we don't end up in a bad situation. I don't think they're going to meet until, I don't know, two or three months here now. It's, they don't meet every month. Um, they'll let you know, right? Yeah, they usually send me, they prefer me not to be there, but They'll send me George, what do you have for us? You're going to report? I'm going to pass it around. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, just some uh, goings on uh, about school. Uh, just a few updates. So we just had our annual school play, which was 1984, was presented over the past weekend. Um, they did a really good job. Um, and uh, wanted to thank Dave Pack and, and uh, for helping out. And um, the, they're gonna, they just started doing um, tryouts for a little shop of Horace uh, yesterday. Were the tryouts yesterday, right? Uh, yes, yeah. auditions yesterday. Auditions, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so they're gonna start gearing up for that as well. Uh, there's going to be a, a seventh grade field trip to the Academy of Music tomorrow to see a series of one act plays based on short stories. Um, we're going to be doing going to Yankee Candle on December 17th for the annual presentation of their of their annual gift to us, uh, which we're very grateful about. And we're looking forward to. Uh, uh, we're going to have our sixth annual poetry slam uh, this Friday on the 14th. Uh, this is judged by the by faculty um, and staff members as well as the high school student body. Uh, and we wanted to thank John Dodonna for organizing this event. Um, we had a, a member of um, GCC come, Tiffany Handy. Uh, I'm sorry, Tiffany Hardy came, and she spoke with juniors and seniors about course offerings for spring semester that students can take outside of school hours. Um, and so this is a so this is for students who are uh, not just doing dual enrollment, kids who want to take enrichment classes at GCC. So that's a great thing. Uh, and that we're also currently uh, organizing an informational night for families on vaping, uh, which is going to be on um, January 16th. Uh, and actually prior to that, um, our assistant principals, Scott Dredge and Brian Ravish, our SRO, are going to be doing, going to a statewide uh, PD on uh, opioid, uh, opioids as well. And so we're hoping that we can sort of, um, we can sort of uh, fold some of that into the uh, presentation as well. And then if you turn it over, we just have some of the important dates that come out. And have either already happened in December or they will be coming up. Um, we've got two concerts coming up, one this Thursday uh, and um, one uh, next Tuesday, uh, high school and middle school concerts as well. So that's where we're at right now. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Gary, is you next? All right. You should have the uh, superintendent's report in front of you as well. I've already covered the Christian Lane. Um, Efficiently an update in the files being moved over here. Um, negotiations for uh, Frontier is underway. Uh, we had our ground rule setting. We kind of and we've set up dates moving forward. 
So at this point forward, you will see executive sessions on all the agendas. So if we ever need to go to an executive session, there's no, I don't have a reason for it to go into it tonight, but if we ever, the committee wants to go to an executive session to talk about an update on negotiations, um, it's there for, it's there, it will be on the agenda moving forward. So when you see it there, it's on there now and moving forward, that's why it's there. Um, so in case you want updates and so on and so forth. Um, the uh, business manager service, IFB, uh, the bid there um, has been posted, as you know from our last joint meeting that we had to get that out before the end of January and um, bids are due by December 21st. Um, I will, this, you guys will meet Emily Laws next week, but Emily was awarded the uh, Superintendent's Academic Excellent Award. Um, Emily is a fantastic student at Frontier who's involved in athletics and band and the plays and student government and what is actually we should probably go the other way what isn't she what isn't, what isn't she, she what isn't she doing um, she's right she's not she's not teaching mrs. Walters class Mrs. Walters yeah. class yeah yeah she'll take she's she's on her way um, also include so she'll be here with her parents at the at the eighth meeting um, and we'll recognize her then and um, I attached with you a letter that was um, sent by the um, the select board up there in Conway um, about the expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School. And I was just very much impressed that they... Um, with the penmanship, with the turn of the phrase? They, I, that, that not only did they, that they put this letter together, but it was one of those things that they went um, and did this without, you know, sometimes we, we all plan and we go tell people what to do. That wasn't what was happening here. There's a group that um, was on the ball and, and did that. And it's Phil. Thank you, Phil. Um, and additionally, um, so you may, those of you in different towns may, um, may wish to do the same. Um, I also attached a um, letter from um, Bill Deal, who's the executive director of the, executive, um, director of the collaborative. And he wrote, also wrote a letter, and I just think it does a nice job of explaining the issue. When we talk about charter schools, um, it's not their mission or their purpose. It's the funding formula and how it affects um, how it affects student movements throughout the, the different counties and what is that um, what that's doing to our budgets and our schools and, and that kind of stuff. So I think his letter did an excellent job. So I included that for you to read through, um, just to get an idea about where the arguments are, what the argument is out there, um, in, in trying to stop the expansion of that school. Um, also included in front of you is a, uh, a I don't have an extra copy, but a, uh, a packet with public school enrollment trends that was sent to me by the collaborative. I got that yesterday. Um, I think it's good to, I know I, I killed a tree by getting it all to you, but if I sent it to you, you wouldn't, it's a lot easier sometimes when it's in your hand, but you can see the different, the patterns of um, the different growth and school choice and um, throughout Franklin and Hampshire County and the other counties in the state. But it, I think some of that stuff is very interesting. And it's interesting where our schools lie, where other schools in, within our county lie. Um, and um, it's food for thought. Some of the graphs are pretty straightforward. The big blue one, not really quite sure why they had to make a graph of that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But if you go, the deeper you go in there more, it's kind of interesting to see um, how our population trends have changed and choice trends of where they're going and um, so on and so forth. So. We did send a letter to the commissioners we have in front of the regional on the expansion of that charter school. Last year? No, we were last year. Yeah, last year. I wasn't penned by me, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, no, they I, tried the same thing two years ago. This is just yes, yeah, they, so every year it comes up, but, so that, yeah. But I would, uh, it's in order. I'd like to make a motion that we send one uh, because of the, you know, it costs us, you know, cost us more once they expand it. So. Motion. Something yeah. a second. The email address is actually on the letter from the Congress Select yeah. Board. It contains the email address that the, that the letter gets sent to. They're, they're accepting digital comments only. 
Oh, I'll okay. second Mr. Dickens. All right. I'll throw them together. Well, after you voted. All in favor? Can we have the motion again? No, we're running it as we speak. The motion <laughs> we, we send a, a uh, very pointed letter that we're not in favor of it, and we can use, uh, we can uh, plagiarize the Conway letter. Yeah. Well, I think you. we can say the school committee, but we can't speak for anyone else. No, but just for our groups, just regional school committee. Mm -hmm. That's not fun. But you could plagiarize the rest of it. With their permission. You okay with that, Sydney? I'm okay with that one. All in favor? Thank you. If no one else has anything, there's a couple of us need to go to a basketball game. Go we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. We're ahead. <laughs>